Coming at number five, we've got Gongium Asylum. Like many famously haunted places, this one is scary and well-known enough to spawn a feature film, and a pretty darn good one too. Like legitimately scary with plenty of twists and a wicked premise. But beyond the scary flick, which is a whole lot of movie magic and quality pacing, we've got an actual ghost story to look at. Many believe this asylum to be one of the most haunted locations in South Korea, and it attracts all sorts of thrill seekers. Let's just hope their stories end up a little better than those in the movie, right? No guarantees. The tales surrounding this abandoned hospital are varied and plentiful, painting many a vivid picture of doom and terror. Most of the time, they don't really line up with each other either. This hasn't stopped rumors from proliferating though. If anything, the huge spread of stories and legends have increased Gonjium's notoriety. The most common thing to hear about is that its patients started dying mysterious deaths one day, and the number of fatalities rose quite quickly. Nobody could explain why this was the case unless they were paranormal deaths. Terrible treatment and tragic deaths leading to the creation of ghosts, phantoms and demons, the imbuing of a dark, evil energy at the place where so many had lost their minds and lives. As time went on, more stories escaped the facility, including the owner of the asylum being a murderous psychopath himself. He would keep people there against their will, regardless of whether their treatment was working or not. From time to time, this owner would kill a patient just for fun while keeping the others to be tortured. Only those who made daring escapes would survive to tell this story. Then there were whispers of doctors becoming just as unhinged as their patients, performing dangerous experiments and doing horrible things to those in their care. The more things became unhinged, the more cursed energy seemed to collect in the building. Now, if we're being honest, the real reason the asylum shut down has nothing to do with these activities, although a sewage problem could be a convenient cover-up for all the insanity behind closed doors. Coming in at number 4, we've got the Rolling Hills Asylum. Sounds really pleasant and picturesque, right? Rolling hills evoke an image of calm, breezy stretches of road, some tall grass blowing in the wind, yeah? Well, that might be how they sold this asylum to prospective patients and their families, but the reality of life here is far from the pastoral charm implied by the name. And it didn't really start in an asylum either. It was more of a place for all sorts of unsavory characters to be collected to ensure they didn't cause any problems for more upstanding members of society. Definitely not a way for the rich to put all the people they didn't want to think about in one convenient location away. Of course, when you put all sorts of poor, sick, and mentally ill people in a cramped place and just sort of leave them there, things don't improve at a great speed. The opposite, if you can believe it. There were almost 2,000 recorded deaths here, but that does seem to be a bit of an underestimate. As is the case with plenty of spots like this, all sorts of undocumented deaths did occur, and it's said that there are hundreds of unmarked and unaccounted for graves on the site. The result of all this death, overcrowding, and lunacy is a legacy of ghosts and demons. Rolling Hills is well known for paranormal activity these days and attracts a fair deal of enthusiasts quite often. In fact, there are all sorts of ghost tours offered to those who don't think sneaking into a haunted asylum is a good idea. People have reported hearing blood-curdling screams throughout the location and have seen doors slam without anyone around to do so. There's also the famed Shadow Hallway, a stretch of corridor that is said to host a whole squad of shadowy apparitions. Walking down this hall, you might see a figure peeking out from around the corner, or maybe you'll witness a looming presence gliding along, looking for something it'll never find. And who could forget dear Roy Krause, the tallest ghost most folks have ever seen? He lived his life as a 7 foot 5 phenom, and now his phantom stands just as tall. Coming in at number 3, we've got Trans-Allegheny. Overcrowding seems to be a universal problem when it comes to places meant for society's undesirables. We'll happily build a place to hide away folks who don't fit the mold, but then we decide there are more odd folks than ever and don't accommodate. It's a problem with prisons now and was a problem with mental asylums back in the day. Trans-Allegheny is a particularly well-known haunted asylum for a multitude of reasons. This enormous building made out of hand-cut stone is something straight out of a nightmare. Urban explorers salivate at the thought of exploring a location like this, and for good reason. The asylum was built to house about 250 people. How many ended up crammed into the location though? Take a wild guess, go ahead. Are you locked in your answer? Good. They ended up funneling over 2,400 people here, over 10 times capacity. You can imagine how this went and what might have happened to those living in this overstuffed hellhole. And it wasn't just the overcrowding that caused problems. The staff here did all sorts of heinous things to the many folks stuck inside, often getting away with it because of the general namelessness of things in a 10 times capacity asylum. Ice pick lobotomies, rusty cages and chains, you name it. The result was despicable and years later we still see ghosts. 
Coming in at number two, we've got the Danvers Lunatic Asylum. This one straight up looks like a haunted castle, which is a great start. The death, debauchery, and general disdain for human life and sanctity almost guarantees that it remains haunted too. Like most asylums, before the idea of mental health was really dreamt up, Danvers was a place of blood and brutality, abuse and archaic treatments, chaos and crisis. It opened with the intention of housing and treating mentally unstable criminals. Treatments back in the day were less than effective though. Shock therapy and lobotomies were the favorites of doctors here, which, surprise surprise, just hurt the criminals more. And after a while, it was decided that Danvers wouldn't just be a place for mentally unstable criminals. They'd toss anyone in there. This saw an influx of mentally stable felons, alcoholics, and handicapped folks, all to be treated the same as the folks who were there first. Uh oh. Nobody seemed to alter their methods to account for these new patients and inmates though, and the result was horrid. Eventually, the staff couldn't keep up with all the new people, and many people died. Some bodies were left to rot for extended periods of time because people passed away and nobody was looking for them. This, of course, led to all sorts of myths and legends about mysterious ghosts and spirits. Number 5 on this list is the Beechworth Lunatic Asylum. Located in Australia, this is one of the most haunted asylums in the entire world. Thrillist says, formerly the Mayday Hills Lunatic Asylum, now La Trobe University scenic Beechworth campus, this place saw 128 years of terror before closing in 1995. Apparently 9,000 patients died here over the years and people were so fast and loose with the term lunatic that few patients ever left the premises alive. It comes as no surprise that a few people lingered after death. Faces floating in windows are a common sight, along with Matron Sharp doing her rounds and children laughing. Tommy Kennedy, who used to transport the dead out of the asylum and died there himself, still hangs around. There's also a woman who was thrown out of a window and died in front of the hospital because she was Jewish and the only person allowed to move her, a rabbi, couldn't make it to Beechworth sooner. Yeah, so clearly this place has seen its fair share of trauma throughout the years, folks. 9,000 people is a lot of people who have died. Like we're talking about a small town's worth of human beings who died at this freaking asylum. And as exampled by that poor Jewish woman, these deaths weren't all from natural causes either. There were said to be some sick workers here. People who were twisted and got off on hurting others. People who worked at the asylum but probably would have been better suited to be in it themselves. Asylums in general are already susceptible to haunting considering what's going on, but when you have this amount of death and atrocities take place, it just makes it that much easier for ghosts and paranormal entities to cling on. Many of the locals don't even come close to this place anymore, and a lot of the tourists who do go here thoroughly regret that decision soon afterwards. These entities are angry and want to punish those who are living for what happened way back then. I don't recommend being one of the people who gets punished. And finally, number one on this list is the Waverly Hills Sanatorium. This is an asylum that I've talked about a few times on this channel before, which speaks to how haunted it actually is. Thrillist says, with an alleged 63,000 deaths taking place inside its walls, this place is up to its eyeballs and spirits, not surprisingly topping lists of America's most haunted spots. Originally built as a tuberculosis hospital in 1910, the building saw many die from the disease, but tales of mistreatment and dubious human experimentation trickled out, and patients left the premises in what was known as the death tunnel or body chute. Apparitions including Timmy, a boy who likes to play with rubber balls who's been caught on tape, the nurse who hanged herself in room 502, another nurse who fell from the same room's window, and scattered screams and footsteps have all been seen. 63,000 deaths. And here we were thinking that the 9,000 in the other place was bad, here's 63,000 more. Any place that has a death tunnel and a body chute, that should not be a place meant for rehabilitation and seeking help. We are talking about some sick stuff that went on here. I would get into some of the rumors associated with the human experimentation, but I honestly don't think that YouTube would let this video stay up if I did. There are a plethora of ghostly spirits that haunt this place now. Dark spirits that have lost all sense of humanity and are more demon than spirit. This is a spot that must be avoided at all costs. Number 4 on this list is Naren Term. So this is a weird and unique one for sure. It actually isn't an asylum anymore, and it's also not abandoned, which makes it pretty unique for a list like this. Currently, it actually serves as a museum, believe it or not. 
Thrillist says it's unclear what's worse, the surely morbid history that took place in Vienna's Fool Tower, Europe's first insane asylum built in 1784, or its current use, the Anatomical Pathological Museum, which features more than 4,000 graphic, gruesome abnormalities, jars full of deformed fetuses and sickening wax models of untreated STDs. Either way, there's enough nightmare fuel in this place to last you until next Halloween. Nightmare fuel is an excellent way to describe this place. It's messed up for sure, guys. I don't know if you're going to get into a position where you won't be able to leave this place, but you definitely will be feeling weird for sure based on what you're looking at. Untreated STDs and deformed fetuses. No thank you. Not to mention this place might actually be haunted. This was the first insane asylum ever in Europe, guys. Just think about what the conditions would have been like. Conditions in mental hospitals today are still not super ideal, but back then you would have been treated horribly. Back then they would have treated you worse than a criminal and probably tortured you until you couldn't take it anymore. There are reports from olden asylums where they would just shove people into tiny little boxes and keep them there for days. Obviously, the people who had to go through this, their spirits have never been able to rest or find peace. So along with the STDs, you might also get haunted as well. Great place this is. Number three on this list is Lear Sikanas. With a name like that, you can just assume that it's going to be haunted. Thrillist says about a half hour from Oslo, this asylum was opened in 1926 and today is considered one of the most haunted hotspots in the country. Despite its reputation and the fact that most of the place has been abandoned since 1985, parts of it still house psychiatric patients who share their space with ghosts, shadows, and odd noises. Between 1945 and 1974, the hospital was notorious for conducting experiments on its patients, especially the testing of new drugs that even the pharmaceutical industry was hesitant to try on humans. I don't know where and when people thought that testing already mentally sick people with questionable drugs was a good idea. It seems like this is something that happened a ton in history and I have no idea how anyone thought this was a good idea. Like first off, they're already sick and going through something so it just doesn't make sense how feeding them something that we know nothing about is going to give the desired result. The people who used to do this had to know it was wrong because the patients at this hospital weren't really given any choice in the matter. They were forced to go through these experiments which often resulted in permanent damage to their bodies, if not death. Those who had to go here from the 40s to the 70s literally could not leave. They were stuck here and they just had to pray that they didn't get the worst of the experiments. Thank your lucky stars that you didn't have to go to this place during this time or you would never be able to get out. Number two on this list is the Pool Park Asylum. This asylum in Wales has been abandoned for over three decades now. Atlas Obscura says, like any good abandoned asylum, damp, dilapidated, and deathly silent. The estate of Pool Park began as a deer park for the nearby Ruthen Castle. Following its time as a hunting ground, the property was passed between a series of wealthy landowners. The elegant mock Tudor style manor house that still stands today was constructed in 1862 for the second Lord Bagot. In 1937, the house was sold to the North Wales County's mental hospital, which was in need of a second location to house overflow patients from the nearby Denby Insane Asylum. Pool Park held 87 patients at capacity, but in times of need had as many as 120. For a brief stint of time during World War II, the grounds also held a prisoner of war camp. Today, the solid wooden floors and intricate wood paneling have rotted due to water damage. The house has been looted for lead and copper and its ceilings are dripping water and shedding plaster. You'll be hard pressed to find an intact window. This was a smaller asylum than some of the other ones on this list, but don't take that to mean that it wasn't as bad or brutal. People suffered here, just as much as in the bigger asylums. It was just a bit more personal here considering there weren't that many people. 
It also wasn't just mental patients who suffered, but as you can probably imagine, the prisoners of war didn't fare too well either. There were definitely a few disappearances, if you will, during that time of the asylum's life. Now, people are free to come and go as you wish, considering the asylum is abandoned, but there are a few ghosts that are fully trapped here. These ghosts are of mental patients and war vets alike, and they are forever bonded to this place, forced to live in this horrible purgatory. You probably don't want to visit this place for fear that they could keep you there with them. And finally, number one on this list is the Creedmoor Psychiatric Center Building 25. High probability that if you got sent to this place, then you are never getting out again. Atlas Obscura says, opened in 1912, Creedmoor State Hospital was initially the farm colony of Brooklyn State Hospital, now Kingsboro, with 32 patients who worked the farmland as part of their treatment. Like many other similar institutions, over the first half of the 20th century, the population at Creedmoor rapidly expanded before deinstitutionalization occurred beginning in the 1950s, at which point the hospital shrank from 8,000 to 500 patients in the span of only four decades. The 1970s were a rough time for the hospital when crime infested the campus. Three assaults, 22 violent assaults, 52 fires, 130 burglaries, 6 people taking their own life, a shooting, and a riot occurred within 20 months of each other. It was around this time that Building 25 was abandoned. Never sold off or demolished, it has been rotting on the hospital grounds since it was vacated in the early 1970s. Yeah, so with everything that went down here, I think it's pretty clear that if you got sent here, odds were not in your favor. These were all things that happened outside of the asylum too. Inside the asylum with the patients and everything, you had the same sick experiments and treatments going down as some of the other ones on this list. Thank goodness it closed down and it isn't operating anymore. 